Welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Pye. Today we're going to be looking at probabilities of compound events, specifically dependent events. We'll be working out of Prentice Hall, Algebra 1, Copyright 2009. This is Lesson 2-7. Finding the probability of dependent events. When you select a tile from a bag of 15 tiles and do not replace it, there are only 14 tiles when you make your second selection. These events are dependent. Key words right here. Do not replace. Or without replacement. Dependent events are events that influence each other. The occurrence of one event affects the probability of the second event. So we're going to see a change in definitely the denominator in the second probability and in sometimes the numerator. When we find the probability of two dependent events, we have a little rule. It's basically the same rule as we saw with independent events. If A and B are dependent events, the probability of A then B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B after A. This just means, this just means that there's going to be a change in the actual probability itself, in the numbers. Remember, we're working with finding the probability of dependent events. Example 3T, selecting without replacement. Again, these key words, without replacement. Suppose you have three quarters and five dimes in your pocket. You take out one coin, but you do not put it back. Then you take out another coin. What is the probability of first taking out a dime and then a quarter? Now, I know this is a compound probability because of the word and. And the first probability is taking out a dime. The second probability is taking out a quarter. So if we write this in terms of the probability equation that we just saw, the probability of a times the probability of b after a going to give us the probability of this um, outcome. So the probability of A is uh, we have to first figure out the total number of coins. The total number of coins is 8. We get that by 3 plus 5. So in the denominator, in our first probability is 8. And since we're going with the probability of A, the first event which is a dime, and there are five dimes, that'd be five out of eight, times B after A. Now what that means is, since we're not putting that coin back in, we only have seven coins left, and the second probability is the probability of a quarter, and there are three quarters. Now we multiply this out to figure out the probability. we get 15 over 56. 5 times 3 is 15. 8 times 7 is 56. That does not reduce, and we can change it to a percent, which is approximately 27%. Remember, changing a fraction to a percent, 15 divided by 56, multiply that result by 100, and that will give you approximately 27%. Example 3S, again, selecting without replacement. Suppose you have ten $1 bills and five $10 bills in your pocket. You take out one bill and do not put it back. Then you take out another bill. What is the probability that you take out a dollar and then a 10? Compound probability because of the word and. The first probability is taking a dollar out. The second probability is taking a 10 out. So the probability of A times the probability of B after A. A being taking a dollar and B being taking a ten. That is equal to the probability of A 
our denominator, because there are 10 $1 bills and five $10 bills, is 15. That's the total number of coins. And there are 10 $1 bills, and we need to multiply that by B after A. So what that means is there's a change in the denominator. There's one less bill in my pocket, so that's 14 bills in my pocket. And the second event is a $10 bill, and there's five $10 bills. And we can multiply that now. 10 times 5 is 50. 15 times 14 is 210. And that can reduce by a factor of 10. We just knock off the zeros, and that'll give us 5 over 21, which is approximately 24%. Example 4, real-world problem solving, finding the probability of a dependent event. A teacher must select two students for a conference. The teacher randomly picks names among three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. Here's our question. What is the probability that the teacher will choose a sophomore than a junior? Before we even do this probability, we have to figure out the total number of students. And uh, we need to add three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors together. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So the total is 13 students. So figuring out the probability that the teacher is going to choose a sophomore, then a junior, is given by what we just saw, the probability of A times the probability of B after A. Now, the probability of A being the first event, choosing a sophomore, there are two sophomores, and there are 13 students, so that would be 2 over 13, times the probability of B, which is choosing a junior. Now, there are only 12 students to choose from, so notice we decrease the denominator, and since there are four juniors, the numerator is going to be 4. We can... cross cancel here two goes into two once two goes into twelve six times and then we can multiply actually we can reduce again two goes into four twice and two goes into six three times now we can multiply we multiply one times two to get two and we multiply three times or thirteen times three to get thirty-nine, which is approximately equal to five percent. Just want to review here real quick what's happening. The denominator changes because this is a dependent event. On the second pick, there is one less student to choose from. That's why these are dependent. The second event is affected by what happens in the first event. There's one less student. Example 14, real world problem solving. A teacher must select two students for a conference. Same setup, but the teacher randomly picks names from three freshmen, two sophomores, four juniors, and four seniors. What is the probability that a junior and a senior are chosen? So same basic problem, but we are choosing a junior then a senior, so a 11th and a 12th grader. So here's another way we could write this out. The first probability is the probability of an 11th grader or a junior. We know we need to multiply that by the probability of a 12th grader or a senior. Now we can set this up. It's a little bit less work. We knew from the last problem that there's 13 total students. 
So that's going to be our denominator in our first probability. And there are four juniors, so that's four out of 13. And we need to multiply that by the probability of choosing a 12th grader second. Once we pick the junior, there's one less student. So the denominator becomes 12. And there are four seniors to choose from. So that probability is 4 over 12. Now to solve this problem, we can reduce before we multiply. We can cross cancel. 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 12 three times. And then we can multiply 1 times 4 to give us 4. And 3 times or 13 times 3 to give us 39. We could change that into a fraction. So the probability is 4 over 39 or 4 out of 39. Which gives us approximately 10%. This has been finding the probability of dependent events. I hope this has helped you. If it has, feel free to leave a comment. If you have a question, leave a comment also.